Hello YouTubers, I'm not an expert, and this is another video about a cheap hand plane from Amazon. Now, this one is a series of handmade tools for wooden plane, and the box has a picture of the block plane that I already reviewed. Or it's actually a uh, rabbit plane that I already reviewed. But that's not what came in this box. What came in this box was this little plane, which is more or less a shoulder plane. Uh, it's almost the same as that other plane, very similar in construction, very different look. That other one looked like that. So what's, what's going on with this one? Well, it's wooden. It's been, I believe, dyed a, a very dark, almost black brown. It's made of the same kind of Asian hardwood. You can see a little grain in there. It's not easy to see because they've, they've darkened it so much. But it's, uh, it's pretty good looking. It has a real nice finish. The uh, workmanship on it's pretty good. Looks like it has either a scratch or maybe a crack developing. Uh, I guess it's a scratch. Okay, and it's assembled just like this other one with a wedge like this. And a very it's very simple. The front edge of that wedge has got a little curve to it, though. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, now, it sa just says... Handmade tools for wooden plane. It doesn't say what kind of plane it is, but my guess from looking at it is that this is a lot like a shoulder plane. In fact, I have a Stanley 92, get that out of the way, a Stanley 92 right here, and you can see those are very similar in size. They're very similar in shape. And I think clearly that was the intention. This is supposed to be a little shoulder plane. Now, the blade angle is not as low as the Stanley, but it's pretty low. I didn't measure that against anything. Let's check it against a square. Okay, well, it's less than 45 degrees. If I knew how to use this, I'd tell you how much it actually was. But it's pretty low. Actually, let's get out. I've got a, I've got a protractor. Let's take a look. That blade angle is... Let's see. How do I do this? I'm so... Easily confused. Okay. That's about... Well, still almost 40 degrees. Huh. Look, looks a lot lower than that to me, but I guess it's not. So it's about a 40 degree. So it's a little bit lower, but not as low as this Stanley 92. Yeah, that's some professional video making right there. I've already got this pretty well set up, so I'm not going to take it apart yet. First, I'm going to do some cutting with it. So I thought, let's, let's see what a shoulder plane is really for, which is making, oops, they bump into everything. It's, it's for working on the shoulder right here, this part. So if you've hand cut this with a saw, I didn't mind with a table saw. If you've hand cut that with a saw, you're going to need to square it off maybe. And that's what this does. So this will ride against the cheek and square that shoulder. So let me stand up here and we'll see how does it cut. Okay, now I have, as usual, no experience at all using shoulder planes. But that appears to work. Now that's the factory edge. Now if you can get a good look at that, if that's focusing. Um, it's right off the grinder. I can see all the marks on it, so it hasn't been honed. But it does feel pretty sharp. So that's that's nice. Since at the price point of these kind of planes, again, this was about, I didn't say, what am I saying again? This was about $26. I think it was just a little bit more than the block plane I did the other day. So I can see it's generating some dust. Remember, this is end grain. It's not, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a nice, beautiful peel off of that like you might. But let's try the old Stanley 92. Okay, and you can hear that. And I just sharpened this. It is cutting a little better. I'm not really sure what to do with this. Okay, well, it's definitely working. It's not creating the most beautiful edge in the world. Probably could use a sharpening, like all of these that I've been looking at. Which, uh... Okay, this will be kind of a quick video because there's not a whole lot to tell about this one. Well, we can try it on a piece of regular wood too and see what it does. 
see if we can use it in this rabbit. Okay, so they're peeled off a shaving. It's actually pretty heavy. And I gouged up the wood pretty good. Okay, that's good to know. And we'll just use it like a little block plane. So, okay, clogs up pretty fast. What that tells me is the blade is actually, you know, it's decently sharp coming from the factory. I mean, everybody always says, oh, they're no good. Eh, that's usable. Not perfect. It does feel pretty good. So what do I think of it as a tiny little shoulder plane? Well, it's at least a third or maybe only a fourth of the cost of buying a modern version of this 92. And the modern version of these have a lot more features. This one will come apart. The front comes off so that you can make it into a, a chisel plane to get into corners. So that kind of doubles up its usability. And I think most of the modern copies of this or the modern versions really, since they have some other features, are uh, also can be have the front ends removed. This has a, a screw type adjuster. That's a lot easier to adjust. Um, it has a lower angle. A lower angle is better for cross grain. So is it as good as a sort of the modern plane? No, not really. Is it kind of cool though? Yeah, you know, it actually is. I like this one and I like that block or not the block plane. I like the rabbit plane that I got from this company. Um, you know, they're not so bad. They're, they're kind of fun. Uh, again, if you're really serious about anything other than reenacting old planes, I'm not sure if it's really all that useful, but, uh, you know, it does work. Let's see. Let's put a little more. I'm going to tap the blade in just a little bit more and try that again. Okay, so you can hear that. That doesn't sound great, and the cut it's left is not real smooth. Let me see if I did that with the Stanley. Oh yeah, much smoother. Um, so part of that could be that it needs to be sharpened. And part of that might be that this blade is somewhat unsupported. Um, let's take it apart. Let's take a look at it. Ah, of course now it doesn't want to come apart. Okay, there we go. So there's the wedge. Just It's just a hunk of wood probably left over from all the, the stuff. But that would be what I would do. And let's take a look at the blade. Okay. Um, I didn't check to see how flat it is. It's got kind of a rough finish. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't, not quite rough, but it's certainly not polished like a lot of people like. And then if we look at the edge, I can tell, you may not be able to see it. Just going to get the angle. And eh, you probably can't. I can't focus on that. Oh, there it goes. Uh, it's got a little con little tiny bit of concaveness to it. So I'm sure this was just done on a grinding wheel. It's very even. Looks pretty square. It looks pretty nice. It needs a sharpening. Maybe I'll go sharpen it up. We'll see if it quiets down. Um, but it actually feels really sharp, though. That's that's a pretty good edge for, for off of a grinder. I don't see any sign that that was honed at all. Um, Kind of a neat little plane. All right, let me go sharpen it up, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back from sharpening, and here it is. Uh, I just put the, the slightest edge on it. I didn't spend a ton of time like I would if I was going to probably use this regularly. But we've got, let me back this up, got our piece of wood. And it's definitely cutting a lot better now that I've got that done. Let's take a look at this shaving. Okay, that's, you know, it's not super thin, but it's it's pretty nice. It doesn't look like I have the blade perfectly square. Let's see, that's a little more square. Let's tighten that up. Okay, well, now that it's been sharpened, that's cutting pretty nice. So let's put the, the cheek back up and see how it does. I can just do it on end grain right here. Let's do it on open end grain. Is everything visible? Am I on camera? Okay. <laughs> Let me skew it a little bit. That'll give me a little better angle. Okay, so it's not... I've seen uh, chisels, hand chisels, bench chisels, sort of peel end grain. And I'm certainly not getting any peeling. I'm just getting dust. I'm okay with that if I need to. Let me... Let me go look at the uh, 
the cheek, if I was doing, or the, the shoulder, if I was actually going to use this as a shoulder plane, I'll put a little pencil mark on here and see if I can get that off. That might be a little too deep. Let's see. There we go. No, it's not really, it's not deep enough. Okay, yeah, that worked pretty good. I actually did trim that up a little. I didn't have it tight enough, so it loosened on me. Yeah, little lessons you got to learn as you use these things. All right, well, this video is starting to drag on. But you know what? I honestly think if you're better at this than I am. Uh, let's see. Let's. Okay, that's value. Okay, well, that's actually cutting. It's not, you know, it's pine. It's very soft. It's very easy to mush the end grain on pine. So uh, probably a piece of hardwood, if I had something handy, might be a better example. Let's see what I've got. That's too messed up. Here's a piece. Yeah, this is going to be a little weird, but I like weird. Okay, we'll open up the device. We'll put this in here. See that okay? Yeah. So this is a piece of African mahogany. That's a really short section. Well, I can already tell it's cutting a lot nicer. <laughs> yeah, it's leaving it okay. Let's see. Okay, you can see I'm a little unprepared because I don't have a really nice shoulder to work with. But as far as planing end grain goes, I know this is really silly and you're saying, wait, Dave, you're clearly not a not an expert. Um that's working. I mean, it's it's trimming that. I'll get my 92 out and try the same wood. Well, it sounds about the same. You know what? That's not bad. I'm kind of impressed with that for the price. And I think if you're willing to fiddle around, sharpen it, and, and get it adjusted really well, I, I kind of slapped this together because I just wanted to make a quick video. Um, kind of a neat little thing. Got it on Amazon. You can uh, search for it there. You'll recognize it by color. Now, one thing I noticed, it's being sold by a bunch of different sellers, a um, bunch of different retailers. So you want to kind of search around and see if you can get the best price. Um, probably all coming from the same factory, but various distributors. Uh, it's real solid. It looks good. Kind of uh, uh, neat. And uh, like I said, if you want to get a hand tool woodworking and your budget's low, this may be the tool you need. Or maybe you don't need one at all. I don't know. You kind of have to decide for yourself, but uh, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a ripoff. It's not junk. It's, it's usable. All right. Well, everybody have fun. We'll catch you next time.